Okay, so um, Netflix, God, I got like dust on my face. Netflix has this newly acquired movie. I'm not gonna. It's not a Netflix movie. It's not their movie. It's like a foreign movie that they've bought, and it's it's now a Netflix movie. But newly acquired movie called The Sun. It's I think they're over somewhere close to Spain or something like that because they all look a little Spanish. Um, but wherever it is, it's somewhere where they drive on the same side of the road as we do. So somewhere over there. So I'm upset over this movie. I just watched it. It's an hour and a half long. Basically, this guy remarries this Scandinavian girl, and she, she's a little odd. You can tell she's a little odd and selfish from the beginning, but he marries her. They, they're trying for a kid, but she doesn't even tell him she's pregnant until weeks after she's found out that she's pregnant. Um, she diagnoses herself um she's a biologist she's a doctor so she thinks she can she knows what's wrong and she knows what's going on but anyways she diagnoses herself with this uh hemo whatever some blood thing and anyway the kid is born and she flips out and she goes nuts and she won't let anybody see him she's saying he has all kind of issues and you know just a little over the top and it gets to a point where she barely lets him see the kid and they live in the same house um she has this nanny that comes from the, it was her nanny over in scandinavia and she brought her in to help her to help them whatever so the two of them are plotting against him i guess they want to take the kid back to scandinavia so he flips out and he goes crazy because he's like it's nuts i barely get to see my kid you're doing all these experimental like treatments on him um so you know like he takes the kid to the doctor one time because the kid had a fever and they ended up in a tussle pushed her down and now she has grounds to wear she can say it's domestic violence she locks him out and files for divorce like right away so she finally lets him see the kid. Well, he finally gets to see the kid 90 days later. But he's looking at the kid and he's like, wait, that is, who the hell is this? Because it's not my kid. Um, so when he starts flipping out about that, they have him on some kind of psych eval and psych board and all that stuff. So now people think he's crazy because um, they're saying he's not recognizing his son. But he knows deep down, because he's a father, he knows that that's not his kid. So he goes snooping around one day after she allows him to see the kid so that she can take... Okay, they strike a deal where she says, okay, well, you can get to see the kid have visitation as long as you allow me to take into Scandinavia to see my family. But he's like, yeah, fine, I'll do it as long as I get to see the kid. So he gets it, and brings it to his friends and whatnot and um sneaks back to her house because he knows something is wonky in her little lab and there's something going on so he sneaks back and um he sees the baby well he sees they never show us the baby he sees him in the lab in a little crib thing and she shows up behind him and shoots him and now he's dead and now her and the nanny are gone so now the the fake kid is with his friends and they think oh the mother has left and now the kid is you know parentless so they take the kid in and they raise him and adopt him and all that stuff so i mean we we as an audience we believe i believe the dad because you no know, dad's just gonna flip out and say well this is not my kid you know so I believe him, especially after seeing that, then you know that this is the wrong kid. And like you're left wondering then where the hell did she get this new kid? And so they flash forward two years and I guess the friends and the fake kid are now over in Scandinavia 
on vacation and whatnot. And the lady kind of wanders off and sees the nanny walking in the market and she follows her all the way to the house. And she starts peeping in windows and then she looks in one and she hears a kid in there. They never show us the kid. I don't know. I don't quite understand why they don't show us the kid. Um, that's kind of the part that kind of pissed me off. It's like, well, was there something? Is there something wrong with the kid? Does he look exactly the same as the the fake kid, or is it like a cloning situation, or you know, something weird? You can know there's something weird going on, but they never show us the kid to kind of give us any answers I guess they're trying so hard to be mysterious and they never quite explain or give us a reason to why she is doing what she's doing or why she did it it just kind of like they just threw a bunch of shit together and say okay here's a movie that's it they don't explain nothing they don't give a backstory they don't it's just little stringing alongs and they want you to come up with your own explanation. It's just, you know, everybody has a reason why they do certain things. And this movie doesn't give any kind of ex explanation. They don't give any kind of proof. You know, even though the proof is there, you get a little tidbits of it, but they never give you the full amount of what you're looking for as an audience. So like this, it completely pissed me off. It could have been an, an amazing movie if only they allowed him or allowed the camera to show us the kid anytime or, you know, give the guy some real concrete proof, you know, of realization before she shot him and killed him. That way we as the watcher could be like oh okay she was doing some crazy stuff and blah 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 but they don't give us that option and like I I don't even give it a one out of five because it completely pissed me off it was a waste of my time to watch it like I said it could have been an excellent movie but without those two things in the movie it completely ruins it it's like it's like a piece of nothing to me now it was trash and it was garbage